This was such a fun episode, with so many big and small details revealed, yet so many more left to go. By the end of this episode, it's easy to conclude that there are at least three realities that are being shown. One where Henry Caldera returns from Apollo 18 with all three of his crewmates alive, lives in a nice apartment, and creates the cow. One where Bud Caldera returns from Apollo 18 with two crewmates dead, has spent the entire show on a cruise ship, and did not create the cow. Finally, one reality is that Bud Caldera returns from Apollo 18 with two crewmates dead, lives in a crappy apartment, and the status of the cow is unknown at that point. So, the episode starts in the ISS, before the impact, at the point where Joe and Alice are having a FaceTime call on the ISS, and are just about to check on Paul and the Cal device. In this scene, we never actually see any interaction with Red Alice and the Cal. Joe floats up to the cupola, points the iPad out the window, and shows Alice the view of Denmark, Netherlands, and the North Sea. Joe says in Swedish, let's see if we can find you. This is the same scene as episode 1. Paul powers up the Cal device just as we expected him to. This time, the show makes a point to remind us again about the MMOD alarm. This is the Joe that returns to the blue car reality. We see the familiar ISS Joe Alice conversation, but this time from slightly different angles. Station is hit, and there's debris floating and crashing everywhere. Joe has a blinding light shining on her face as she looks towards the location of the cow, and finally, we have new details on this event. We see another Joe hurling away from the cow towards the cupola and then smashes her head, and boom! Then we cut to the intro. Wow! What an opening scene. At first, I thought the shocked look on Joe's face was because she saw the other Joe hit the cupola, but after re-watching, I realized it was the blinding part of the blinding light. I also thought, why would the other Joe rotate herself to smash her head instead? But I'm sure there's an explanation somewhere between turbulence and the immediate access theorem. Next, we see Paul floating through the ISS yelling Joe several times, and Paul is clearly not pinned down. So, we know that this is not the same Paul we've seen before. Paul says while floating down the corridor, tell them we lost the cow. And I'm thinking, wait, what? Where'd it go? The answer to that actually is in the first episode. In this scene, you can see that the Paul from the reality where episode one Joe is from is not working on a cow device. Episode one and onwards, you can see Blue Alice and Paul working on the cow. This also explains why in episode one, when Joe was asked to retrieve the cow data core, she responds, don't know it, don't know if I'll have enough time. She's from the reality that episode 6 Paul got sent to, a reality with no Cal device. Paul finally makes it to Joe, and the extent of her injuries makes it obvious that she's not coming back from this. This Joe who dies came from the blue car reality where Henry created the Cal, Paul's wife is Frida, and Magnus gets cheated on. This really looks like a situation where the more bad karma you have, the more likely you'll die when you move realities. Paul is at the cupola pulling Joe off the window as he picks up her head. The hole keeps sucking her blood and eyeball out. <laughs> So Paul has to scoop up the eye and plug it with a wet nap. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's so much to process. The scene is timed just right to line up with episode one, where Joe says, Houston, do you copy? Then you hear the sound of glass cracking. Then episode one, Joe gets a headache. This headache is her feeling episode six, Joe hitting her head and dying. We see Magnus walking up to his student's overly glued paper bat. It's similar to what we saw in episode 1, but we now know that this is going to be different because we're seeing the reality that Paul has moved into, the red car slash no cal reality where Joe never cheated. Paul's wife is seen walking out of the school with Wendy, followed by Magnus needing to tell Alice that her mom has died. Paul floats up to where the cow should be, looks very confused, and says to himself, where the hell have you gone? This is because he just moved into a different reality and hasn't realized it yet. Just as Paul floats away, the camera pans at the porthole. At the porthole is Denmark, but in reverse. This would explain why Irina on the tapes was saying, the world's the wrong way around. Red Alice boards the plane, and in this reality, she's the one who just lost her parent and is then coached by a friend's parent to sit with her friend. In this scene, and in episode one, the child who lost their parent ends up taking off with a bunny in their lap. In episode 1, we see Blue Alice with a mole on the left of her lip, and in episode 6, we can see that Red Alice doesn't have a mole. Red Alice and Blue Alice are played by two actors that are sisters in real life. They look different because they are different. Back up at the ISS, Ilya and Audrey prepare the capsule for re-entry and ask Paul if he has anything left to say. Paul says he was working on the cold atomic laboratory, the Cal, and that it's lost. 
He tells them to pass that on to Henry Caldera. To his surprise, none of his crewmates know what he's talking about, but they agree to pass it on. They don't know because they're in a reality that never created the cow. Now, really fun fact. The Cold Atomic Lab is a real NASA project that has been up on the ISS since 2018. They've in fact discovered a fifth state of matter with it called the Bose-Einstein condensate. NASA's real-life science is actually very similar to the show. In the next scene, Magnus is carrying Alice to their quarters and asks her dad, if you die in space, do you die on Earth? To which Magnus had no reply and just asked her to get some sleep. And that was pretty good deflection on his part. Paul is sitting in the capsule next to dead Joe, putting a picture of his family back on the controls when he hears someone breathing. He looks over at Joe, confused, grabs his light, and gets super spooked out. Now, back on Earth, Magnus is getting frustrated looking for Alice in a dark hallway. After a few moments, he hears tapping down the hall and follows it to find Alice watching an explosion. Magnus was pretty upset about this, pulled her out, and asked her what she was watching. She explained that it was an accident at Baikonur and that 100 people died. This is tied to a real-life event that happened in October 24th, 1960, and is called the Nedelin Catastrophe. Magnus tries to pull Alice out of the cupboard, but she freaks out, so Magnus lets her return to it. When she pulls the cupboard shut, we see her beaded necklace swinging back and forth. Magnus walks away, and Alice starts tapping her foot. Alice taps her foot loudly for a few moments, then hears a weird whisper and sees a light shining in. She can see Joe's face and bursts out yelling, Mama? But she's no longer there. This is tied to the ending of episode one, where Joe goes to retrieve the Cal data core on Destiny, experiences bright lights, and then moves from the reality with a cow to the reality with no cow. This was really cool because now, for the first time, we're starting to see what happens in the realities Joe was momentarily moving to and what was happening in the reality that she was picking up in ghost recordings. On the ISS, Paul has four hours left of life support and has five batteries installed. As he's recording his progress, he gets spooked out by Joe's body. In total silence, his recording device picks up audio, and the white cloth over Joe's body floats away. This is nearly the same experience Joe has with Paul in episode 2. Paul asked Houston about the protocol for dead bodies. Apparently, he's spooked enough to not want to be anywhere near her. Houston asked what his concern is, and instead of saying it was because he heard her breathing, he says that it's because he's afraid of blood going everywhere upon re-entry due to the cuts on her face. Paul takes Joe to Destiny and says to Joe's body, you Gotta stop breathing. You stay in Destiny. This is the creepy recording Joe picked up in episode 2. Paul apologizes to Joe as he's holding her dead head and sees Joe alive for just a moment, just enough to creep him out completely. He then leaves her and seals her inside. Really cool to see this from Paul's side, actually. This means that Paul leaves Joe's dead body on the ISS and Joe leaves her iPad with her last goodbyes on the ISS. One way or another, Joe is left behind on the ISS. Wendy and Alice are on the swings discussing if ghosts and God exist when Wendy's mom yells out the window, Wendy, daddy's coming home. Wendy apologizes for being excited and Alice whispers, my mama's coming home too. The moment after thinking that her mama's body is coming back, Alice looks up and her dad has to tell her that they're going to leave her mom up in space. Paul is getting ready to undock and he gets the same bolt system malfunction that Joe had and is just as mysteriously fixed as Joe's was by a mysterious floating person who hits the button on the other side. Paul successfully detaches from the ISS, and when he looks back, he can see what looks like Joe, alive, floating near the window. Paul sealed Joe in destiny, so that can't be the dead Joe. This would mean that there are three Joes, one who dies on impact, one who returns to Earth, and one who stays on the ISS, alive. I think the Joe alive on the station is the Joe from the reality where Bud Caldera is debating the investigator on the cruise ship. The scene pans into a cruise ship with Bud Caldera, retired astronaut, not crappy apartment Bud. The reporter can be heard saying, the world is watching as we wait to find out what's become of the astronauts still left on the ISS, now literally the loneliest person in the universe. The show went to great lengths to not reveal too many details about this reality yet. Paul comes home safe and is shown getting out of the car. As he's hugging his wife, he says, I love you so much, Frida, but she corrects him and says, Erica is my name. This detail shows that this Paul comes from a reality where his wife's name is Frida, but then goes to a reality where it's Erica. Episode 3, Joe calls Paul's wife Erica in the reality she's in, but Paul's wife gets upset and tells her it's Frida. Magnus tries to console Alice about her mom being left in space, but Alice is understandably not ready to start feeling better. He tries to equate it to her mom being in a pyramid like a pharaoh, but Alice replies saying, This is her home, daddy, with us. Paul is at Joe's grave and puts a flower down. Just as he does, he sees a second flower being placed, looks up, and sees Joe. 
I think the reason they're face to face like this instead of on top of each other is because of the mirror effect. Earlier in the episode, it showed that Paul is in a reality that is the mirror shape of Joe's. Magnus and Alice are at the table with Paul and the other astronauts, and Alice asks Paul why he didn't bring her mama back. Paul tries to explain the cuts, which upsets Magnus, and they walk out. Right after Magnus walks out, Paul looks over and sees a funeral picture of himself. With Paul creeped out from seeing the pictures, he then gets worried about his psych eval and tells his crewmates to keep their mouth shut. Mind your business. Alice is walking with a rabbit between the buildings. She looks back and sees Henry dressed in a suit and tie, but in this reality, he's not a suit and tie kind of person. So she's seeing Henry from another reality. This ties back to episode three, where Henry sees Alice twice. He's even wearing the same thing as in episode six. We see that it's really this Alice stomping on the rabbit, and we hear the other Alice from episode three yelling, hey, faintly, just like in episode three. Paul is at the deposition giving his testimony about what he's working on with the cow, but is interrupted because no one knows what the cow is. He tries to explain further, but still, no one knows. He turns to his crewmates for confirmation, but they can't corroborate. Paul sees the ISS video of himself, and it's the same reality as episode one. You could even hear the same conversation Joe and Alice had. Paul is informed by Sergei that the Cal Project was shut down 12 years ago. Frederick changes the subject and begins questioning Paul about why Joe is on the ISS. Paul continues to say that it was the call from Houston, but pushback grows because that call from Houston was based on Paul's assessment. Alice, back at home, sees all the presents left behind and just snaps, trashes the presents, stomps on them, and rips things up. She slows her tantrum, looks out the window, and it looks like something is creeping her out. In the background, piano music can be heard fading in louder and louder. She looks over at the record player and sees that it's off. She can hear this music, but can't tell where it's from. Then it suddenly stops. This is the piano music that Joe mysteriously knew how to play in episode four and suddenly stopped. Magnus talks to someone about how to help Alice. He says he's struggling and isn't sure what to do. The therapist suggests having some kind of ceremony. This advice is probably what leads to Magnus to taking Alice to the cabin. Paul is at home watching videos about Henry Caldera and the Apollo 18 accident. In this reality, there was no accident. Not a lot of details are shown in the video, but Paul is very confused by what he's watching. Paul hears the same creepy static from the video that he heard with Joe. At this point, it feels like Paul is catching on that something is very wrong around him, and it's agitating him. Paul goes to work to get answers about his Henry, but they don't know, and tell him that Bud Caldera is a disgrace and probably in a ditch somewhere. He's told, Apollo 18 is NASA's biggest f this makes it sound like Paul is in the reality where drunk Bud lives and not the Bud who's on a cruise ship. Paul sits down with his family for breakfast and calls his daughter Wendy Wu, which she doesn't respond to. When Wendy's mom responds instead, there's an argument and his wife really sticks it to him by reminding him that her name is Erica and not Frida. So much tension in the air, you can shift reality with it just like in episode three. It's the day of Joe's wake or funeral and Magnus is searching around the house for Alice. He eventually finds her in a cupboard and tries to talk her out so she can say goodbye. Alice refuses to come out saying, why should I come out when she's still up there? Ooh. Magnus realizes that he's not going to talk her out and leaves her be. Paul and his family arrive for the wake, but Paul gets too scared to go in and tries to hide in the car. He confesses that he left her up there because he was scared and a coward and I tend to agree with his assessment. He's unstable, scared, and making irrational decisions. He kind of sounds like Drunk Bud. It seems like the worst versions of people end up moving to this reality. Drunk Bud, Cheating Joe, and Angry slash Unstable Paul. Now that Paul feels a little better from getting that off his chest, he decides to head into the wake where he's seen taking some pills, then asks his daughter again if she's talked to Alice. Paul immediately overreacts at her reply and calls her daughter an asshole. Talk about projection. With Wendy angry at her dad, she grabs Alice and brings her to Paul. Wendy then tells Alice, my daddy has something to say to you. He says that your mama may still be alive. Paul looks towards the stairs. Alice sees where Paul's looking, and then we see the Alice from episode four screaming. Alice, who just lost her mom, is witnessing her mom console a copy of herself just moments after being told that Paul thinks her mom may still be alive. Wow, that is a lot for a 10 year old to process. Magnus goes up to Alice's room to help her calm down and suggests that they get away for a while, to which Alice assertively suggests Mama's cabin. Magnus is reluctant, but agrees. Erica wakes up, realizes that Paul is not around, so she calls his boss. She comes over and tells her that this happens sometimes, and it's called high-altitude psychosis. This is very parallel to the relationship between Magnus and Frederick, but without the cheating. Magnus pulls up to the snow block path in a red car. 
says that they're not able to drive, so Alice demands we can walk. Alice also suggests driving over the lake, which Magnus thinks is ridiculous. Alice, being determined, gets out and walks. This is the red car Joe remembers having in episode 2, and why there's no red car parked at the cabin when Joe finds her Alice there. Paul pulls up to Drunk Bud's crappy apartment in LA, California. But anyways, we jump back over to Alice and Magnus just arriving at the cabin. Magnus lights the fire and a few candles, then starts this weird fight with Alice about the painting and Alice only liking what he doesn't. After their fight, Alice promises Magnus that Mama is still around and that they'll see her again. Magnus doubles down and tells her that they must move on and start again. Mama is not coming back. Then we cut to Paul knocking on Drunk Bud's door looking for answers, but Bud didn't want to talk to him and told him to leave. Paul starts to ask about the Apollo 18 accident and says Henry is a hero in his reality, that the Apollo 18 was repaired by him. All the while, Bud is getting angry that Paul is not leaving. Bud finally says, It may not be what I thought happened, but this here is what happened. This just angers Paul even more and he grabs Bud, demanding real answers. Paul demands one last time, tell me why you're here. But Bud pulls a gun out of his drawer and says, you tell me why you're here, then shoots Paul. The episode ends at the cabin with a blue car Joe drove across the lake driving up to the cabin and Alice watching Joe get out. Whew. That was another crazy episode with more ridiculous twists and turns. This show never ceases to amaze me, and I'm looking forward to seeing whatever chaos is in store for us next week. But as always, in the meantime, please leave your thoughts and theories down below on where you guys think all of this madness is leading us, and until next time, thanks for watching.